We start with a Fox 10 News alert tonight. A 10 year old boy hiking on South Mountain has been flown off uh, after collapsing on the trail. And Fox 10's Kenzie Beach is live now with the latest details on this. Kenzie. Yeah, guys, we spoke with Phoenix Fire Captain Sean Dubois, who says this one does not look good. We know that a 10 year old boy is listed in extremely critical condition right now after hiking here on South Mountain. He was out here since 930 this morning. Now, we don't know why they were out here for close to five hours during the hottest part of the day. It's over 110 degrees out here just right now. And Phoenix Fire got the call at 2 p.m. Sky Fox captured crews giving the kids CPR on this trail. He was taken by helicopter and is listed in extremely critical condition. They were about a mile into the trail where he was rescued. The group, they're a group and they think it's a family of relatives and they're believed to be from out of town. It is really strongly encouraged to uh, stay off these hiking trails, certainly in the middle of the day when, when the temperatures are the hottest. As a parent, I feel horrible for what happened, that that was my responsibility. Um, I think it depends on the parent. If they have good intentions, they want to show their child a good time, get them away from uh, electronics, I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, adults need to have make good choices, yeah. and today is probably not a good choice to be out in the heat. Now we're here at the base of South Mountain Trail where there are a bunch of signs here warning people of the heat, telling them to hike when it's cooler outside in the early morning or the evening and turn around before your water is halfway gone. Now we know that this group was out here since about 9.30 this morning, so it's not clear what they were doing from 9.30 until that call came in at 2 o'clock. Since we've been here, we've seen people still going out on the trails. Now Camelback and Piesta Wall Peak are closed when there's an excessive heat warning. There isn't one today, but South Mountain is not included in that. Live from South Mountain, Kenzie Beach, Fox 10 News. They're here and there's so many of them. It was picked up on radar Saturday. Yeah, we're talking about, I, first I thought we were talking about cicadas, but no. We're talking about thousands of bats that emerged from the bat cave along the Arizona Canal Trail. We have a bat cave? We have a bat cave. What? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Look at that. Fox 10's Ashley Rodriguez reports that this swarm will soon swell to double its size. Hey, Ashley. Hey, yeah, we have a bat cave and it is so cool. My first time being over here. Now I was able to see one bat today. Obviously they're nocturnal. They only come out at night, but I know that there are tons of them in there because I could hear them. Now I spoke to an expert that says it's mainly lady bats in there and they are going to be taking care of their babies. They're pregnant right now. They're incubating them. So if watching bats swarm out during the summer is your thing, you're going to want to wait till September because that's when the swarm is expected to double in size. It came as a surprise to the National Weather Service Saturday that all that green on the radar around dusk wasn't rain. In this case, um, bats. Every year, 10 to 20,000 bats fly to Phoenix on their migration path to Mexico. And for some reason, thousands of those bats have chosen this tunnel off 40th Street in the Biltmore area to sleep during the day. And this is where they emerge at night. Let's go check it out. Photographer Alessa Contreras and I tried to catch a sighting of the swarm. We saw one, and just that one scared us. Oh my God, this one. <laughs> so far, we can't see the bats, but we can definitely hear them. It sounds like they're in between the slabs of the tunnel. Just listen. The bats, most likely of the Mexican free-tailed sort, are nocturnal, only coming out at night. There's a fascination, and fascination's negative or positive draw people to go out and experience them. University of Arizona's Dr. Jonathan Durbridge says these furry flying mammals are drawn to any dark spaces without humans. In this case, the bat cave in Biltmore is now their temporary maternity roost, where females incubate their babies until they're ready to fly to Mexico. And for each bat in there now, there will be an extra one flying out. That number towards the end of the summer is actually going to be slightly larger, maybe significantly larger. Robert Polk has brought the family to sit outside the tunnel until nightfall to watch the summer swarms, an activity that's captivated humans for centuries. Coming in at the right time and waiting and being patient, you'll get to see them coming out. Yeah, it would be worth it. Now, as I was talking to people about this story, there was some concern that possibly with 
thousands of bats flying around, you could get bitten and get rabies, right? That's kind of like the myth out there. Well, the experts said that bats really avoid humans. They don't want to be anywhere near us. It's very rare that a bat would attack you, and you would know if an animal had rabies. Really, why they leave their roost is to go find food, and they're really after mosquitoes. So they're really our friends. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Today, the Arizona Police Association and the Maricopa County Attorney are pushing back on the Department of Justice's investigation into Phoenix Police. Fox 10's Lauren Clark joining us live now with what they've learned after combing through the report several weeks after its release. Hey there, Mark. Yeah, if you recall, the Phoenix Police Department and city officials read the report at the same time the public did. Now, three weeks later, they've said they've discovered some very severe inaccuracies. They spoke generally today, teasing, though, to a full comprehensive report on the investigation in just a few weeks. Comb through the report. And are appalled. President of the Arizona Police Association, Justin Harris, not mincing words, slamming the Department of Justice's findings into the Phoenix PD. It is highly irresponsible and offensive. Last month, following a nearly three year investigation, the DOJ released a searing 126 page report. It found Phoenix PD police discriminates against black, Hispanic, and Native American people, unlawfully detains homeless people, and uses unjustified, deadly, and excessive force. And we already know of quotes that they have uh, used in their report that actually are not backed up by um, actual recordings that they took. Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell also questioning the report's conclusions, saying details were taken out of context. The DOJ declined to comment. I believe this is a smear campaign. I believe mm -hmm. this is many people who have spoken out, homeless people, people of color, uh, mentally ill people who have spoken out wanting change and you have facts and evidence based upon lawsuits that we have filed ourselves. But civil rights attorney Benjamin Taylor, who has sued the city of Phoenix's police department, says it's time for accountability, suggesting the city needs to sign a consent decree with the police department overseen by a judge and DOJ appointed monitor to implement change. The reason why you don't want the city of Phoenix looking over themselves is because it's like the wolf guarding the hen house. Now, proponents of a consent decree says it keeps police accountable and helps improve relations between police and the community. However, critics say it's costly and ineffective, pointing to several cities under one that have seen an increased crime rate and costing millions of dollars. Now, city officials on the record have said they do not want to sign a consent decree, setting the stage for a potential court battle. Reporting live here in Phoenix, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News.